tidings to Mary, and she conceived by the Holy Ghost. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Be it, it done unto me according to thy word. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. And the Word was made flesh, and, and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary, Mary, Mother of God, God pray, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. For forth we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that as we have known the incarnation of thy Son, Jesus Christ, by the message of an angel, so by his cross and passion may we come to know the glory of his resurrection, through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, in the name of the Father, and in the name of the Holy Spirit, 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 Quei tu este un scoti cu lume, corect, pe unde mi-a plistit cu arisisis în cer, un primul frigi în negru de pus. E mi-a deluce în drumul veritate în fum, hip să mi-a deduțeară un tuturuțeară, un timon tu să-mi sunt oameni de tabăna altă la tua. Ei te întroare cu rătare de, e de încuritifică de urmă tot cu mea. Pe un fitei cu hipi în fitără, Deus, Deus meu, scoai trisă-ți anima mea, aș poare cu întru pe asta. Spere în Deo, cu anii mea, pe un fitei cu ilu, salutare cu Iisus mea, e Deus meu. Gloria Patria, Filio et Spiritui Sancto, Sico Dera per Principio e Nun per Sempre, et in Secula Seculorum. Amen. In Troi Volatari Dei, ed è in Vivitifica di Uno Tutti Meo. Auditori Nostri, Nomine Domini, qui feci il Cielo in Eterra. Confitti o Deum Nicotenti, Via di Maria Sottilice, Via di Totale Eterno, Nomine Adore Battisti, Santo Sposti, Spetto e Pro, Via di Maria Maria, Via di 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 Maria, Omnes in Domino, Dium festum celebrante sub honore Maria e Veginis, de cuius assumsione gaudet angeli et calaudam filium Dei, eruptabit cor meum verbum bonum, dico ego opera mea regi. Gloria, Patria, Filio et Spiritui Santo, sicut erat in principio et nunc et sempre, et in secula seculorum amen. Gaudet amus omnes in Domino, Dium festum celebrante sub honore Maria e Veginis, de cuius assumsione gaudet angeli et calaudunt filium Dei. Kyria eleison, Kyria eleison, Kyria eleison, Christa eleison, Christa eleison, Christa eleison, 
day is taken from the Book of Wisdom. I sought rest, and I shall abide in the inheritance of the Lord. Then the Creator of all things commanded and said to me, And he that made me rested in my tabernacle, and he said to me, Let thy dwelling be in Jacob, and thy inheritance in Israel, and take root in my elect. And so was I established in Zion, and in the holy city likewise I rested, and my power was in Jerusalem. And I took root in an honourable people, and in the portion of my God his inheritance, and my abode is in the full assembly of saints. I was exalted like a cedar in Libanus, and as a cypress tree on Mount Zion. I was exalted like a palm tree in Cades, and as a rose plant in Jericho, as a fair olive tree in the plains, and as a plain tree by the water in the streets was I exalted. I gave a sweet smell like cinnamon and aromatic balm. I yielded a sweet odour like the best myrrh. And the Holy Gospel today is a continuation of that according to St. Luke. At that time, Jesus entered into a certain town, and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house, and she had a sister called Mary, who, sitting also at the Lord's feet, heard his word. But Martha was busy about much serving, who stood and said, Lord, hast thou no care that my sister hath left me alone to serve? Speak to her, therefore, that she help me. And the Lord answering said to her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful, and art troubled about many things. But one thing is necessary. Mary hath chosen the best part, which shall not be taken away from her. Now Mary, for the grace of the Lord is with thee, blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary, Mary, Mother of God, God pray for our sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In nomine Patri, se Filii, Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Carissimi, beloved in Christ, welcome to this broadcast Mass on this, the great feast and solemnity of the Dormition of the Holy Mother of God, also known, of course, uh, generally as the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary. There are two titles for this feast, essentially because there are two aspects uh, about uh, Our Lady that uh, this feast is celebrating. The Domitian, as it is known uh, uh, universally and particularly by uh, the Orthodox, uh, and even in the Book of Common Prayer of the Church of England, it said the falling asleep of the Blessed Virgin Mary. A euphemism, perhaps, we're not quite sure, uh, even when Pope Pius XII attempted to define the dogma of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary, uh, he still left unanswered this ancient question as to whether or not Our Lady uh, passed away and then was taken and received into heaven, or whether she didn't actually uh, pass away but fell asleep and was taken up uh, to heaven then. We're not quite sure. What we do know is there is no tomb. There is no tomb. There is a beautiful house um, at Ephesus, uh, and there is uh, a house in Jerusalem, uh, long believed uh, through legend to have, be uh, to have been uh, homes of our Blessed Mother. We know that uh, St. John particularly had been given charge of Our Lady, a member of the foot of the cross in the throes of Christ's Passion. Uh, our Lord entrusted uh, the Blessed Virgin to St. John, the Beloved, and for that reason, of course, the house in Ephesus is believed to be the place uh, where they resided, St. John, of course, having uh, been the first uh, bishop in that place. But a long and ancient tradition also says that when Our Lady was near death, uh, all the apostles were miraculously transported from wherever they were in the world to be at her bedside in Jerusalem, to be there and witness her passing. And it is said that they witnessed also our Lord himself to receive his Blessed Mother and take her into heaven. Whether indeed then Our Lady fell asleep, whether indeed she passed away, or whether indeed uh, the assumption about the assumption is true, what we celebrate today is what will possibly be true for us. Because what does the remission and the ascension, the assumption of Our Lady, what does it signify? 
What does it suggest? It suggests, of course, that she who had been the most holy Teotokos, she who had been the mother of God, she had been that living and breathing tabernacle of the Lord Most High, who for nine months, of course, had, uh, by the power of the Holy Ghost, uh, conceived the Son of God, of God made man, of Emmanuel, God with us, that her body thus was, as it were, a living temple, a living tabernacle of God the Most High. Could such a thing be allowed to decay and corrupt, as with all other things? Could something that had been so hallowed, that had been so precious, that had played such a vital and important role in our salvation, be allowed simply to crumble to dust. Holy Mother Church believes not. Holy Mother Church believes that such a sacred vessel, so pure and undefiled, was taken back by God. We've also long uh, regarded Our Lady as the first disciple, in the sense of being not just the first Christian. How else? What other? What, what? What else could she be, having carried the Lord Jesus in her belly? But also that she is the prime example, the epitome of Christian discipleship. Why? Because she applied and was ever discerning and applying herself to God's will. And when God's will was made known to her by the Archangel Gabriel, she accepted it. Remember, these past few days uh, in the octave of St. Lawrence, Deacon and Martyr, we have reflected on how it is all about doing God's will, that we are to grow in holiness and to live in love and in union with him both now and forever. Remember, our Lord in the Our Father tells us to pray, Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. It is all about applying ourselves to God's will, accepting God's will, discerning God's will, becoming vehicles of God's will, and in Our Lady's case, of course, becoming an actual vessel, an actual vehicle, an actual instrument of God's will in a most unique and powerful way. So it was that she, Holy Mother Church, believes, received straight away the gift of our Christian hope, the gift of our resurrection, that when she passed away from this earthly life, when her time uh, on earth was done, she was assumed, body and soul, into heaven. That she was the first to receive that glorious resurrection of the body that we ourselves, all of us as Christians, hope to receive when our Lord Jesus returns again. It is only fitting, only proper, and only right that for these two reasons Our Lady should have received this great and special honour. Taken by her Son up into heaven to sit with him and be crowned by him as Queen of Heaven. As the liturgy tells us today, describes to us today, the angelic host singing with joy an exclamation to receive the Queen of Heaven. As the opening words of the Mass said, Gaudiamus omnes in Domino, rejoice all in the Lord on this feast day where Our Lady has been taken up into Heaven. But because, my brothers and sisters, it's not all about Mary, it's not all about our Lady. We are celebrating, of course, Our Lady's triumphal entry into heaven by virtue of that glorious resurrection of the body which we will all receive, by virtue of that gospel of good news, of salvation that our Lord Jesus Christ imparted to us. 
but it's also a reminder that we too will receive such ourselves. And so it is that today's gospel may seem a little strange, because it's not Mary, the mother of Jesus, that the gospel's referring to, but Mary, the sister of Martha, the sisters of Bethany. But why? Well, because of the instruction thereby that we might hope to attain ourselves this great and special, joyous event that has occurred for the Blessed Virgin Mary. In order for us to receive our glorious bodily resurrection into heaven, in heaven to be with God forever, we need to take to heart the lesson that Mary, Ma Mary, Martha's sister, has exemplified of listening to the word. Listening to the word. To the word made flesh. To the word that dwelt among us. To the word that was conceived and born through Mary. Remember, elsewhere in the Gospel, after the raising of the widow of Nain's son, a woman in the crowd, cry, in the woman uh, in the crowd, cries out, "Blessed is the womb that bore thee and the breasts which suckled thee." And our Lord straight away says, "No, rather shall we say, Blessed are they who hear the word of God and keep it." There. Of course, Our Lady, figuratively, was being uh, hailed. And yet Jesus says, no, it is the Word that is important, the Word of God. It is that which saves. And it is that which will save us, my brothers and sisters, as we reflected uh, uh, a couple of weeks ago about this same Gospel. Indeed, uh, uh, there is an, a room for balance between uh, action and meditation. We see this in the uh, lives of religious congregations all around the world, of monks and nuns in active and contemplative ministries. But even those in the uh, uh, active ministries, for example, uh, engaged in teaching, or in serving the poor. Even so, they are required still to observe the hours of the church's day in prayer. And for those contemplatives who have given their lives to meditating frequently upon the Word, even so, they are required to do what is necessary to keep the monastery going, to do those practical tasks, those everyday chores, of preparing food, of washing and cleaning and tidying up, etc., etc. So we too, my brothers and sisters, in our daily lives, must seek to strive to find a balance between the active and the passive in terms of our relation to the Word made flesh, to the Word of God, of an, and of our keeping of our keeping it, of course, relates both to the active and the passive. To know the Word of God, we must spend time in meditation upon it. We must allow ourselves to read Scripture, to understand the teachings of the Church, and take it into ourselves to increase our understanding. But that requires this time making time to do so. At the same time, we have, of course, all the usual things to do in everyday life, all the usual chores. But we can still express an understanding of the Word. Indeed, we can still be meditating sometimes while we are doing something else. We can still be contemplating words of Scripture. And in both, 
active and passive, we can be continually praising and worshipping God the Father. We can continually be striving and seeking to give God the glory. How wonderful it was last week with those two American divers who said that their identity was in Christ, that it was for God that they sought to give the glory of their Olympic goal. things my brothers and sisters we too should be seeking to identify ourselves with Christ to see our identity in him and also too to strive to give glory to God in all that we do as we've reflected many times before however menial make that uh, make that bath shine to give God the glory Make the best you can food-wise to give God the glory. Do the best you can at school, at homework, in the office, in that thesis, in that essay, in that drawing or in that painting, in that composition or in that playing of music, in working out those algorithms, in studying logic. Whatever it is that we do in life, let us continually strive to seek to give God the glory. Let us continually strive to hear the word of God and keep it. So that we too may indeed receive that which we celebrate today that Our Lady received first. Our share in the glorious bodily resurrection. that triumph of God's love over death, our share in that inheritance of Christ's eternal kingdom. For we too, my brothers and sisters, are ourselves, remember, incarnate beings of spirit and flesh. And by virtue of our baptism, we have become other than of the world. We have been set apart. We have, been, we have become God's chosen people. Those who will receive the inheritance of Christ. And every time we receive the Holy Eucharist, we ourselves too become briefly tabernacles of the Most High, living temples of God. Thus, we too one day, by keeping the Word of God, by giving Him the glory, we too will come to realize this great privilege and honor that was first given to her who had given so much, so much in faith, so much by faith, so much trust. I just love those little verses that speak of Our Lady's simple resignation to the will of God, where it says, and Mary pondered these things in her heart. She didn't necessarily always understand what was going on. But being not as daft as the apostles, she kept stum, she kept quiet, she kept her silence. And she pondered all these miraculous things, all these strange and wonderful things, all these things that didn't quite make sense. She pondered them in her heart. And so too should we, my brothers and sisters. So too should we continually ponder in our hearts the wonder and mystery of the Incarnation, the wonder and joy of the Gospel of Good News, of salvation. We should continually ponder in our hearts the Word of God as we strive to keep it as we continue 
in our own earthly pilgrimage towards our heavenly home, that we may to ourselves receive all the benefits and grace of his passion, of his death, and of his resurrection. Today, my brothers and sisters, is a great day, and Holy Mother Church will celebrate this day for eight days hence. And it is, if you like, in a funny kind of unofficial, informal way, an extension of the resurrection, an extension of the Paschal Mystery, an extension of Easter Sunday, but celebrating not just our Lord's glorious resurrection, but the possibility of our own glorious bodily resurrection that Our Lady was the first to receive, who continually in heaven, reigning as Queen, prays for us. us, my brothers and sisters, avail herself, ourselves of her intercession. Pray for the gift of God's grace. Avail ourselves of God's grace made available to us in the sacraments, in the restorative sacraments of penance and Eucharist, that we may stay on that narrow path homeward, to ourselves receive that which she received first, to ourselves receive our share in that which he won for us upon the cross, that we might have life abundantly and everlasting with him who is God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. in unum tenum, Padre omnipotente, factorum celi et terre, visibilium omnium et invisibilium, et in unum dominum, Jesum Christum filium de unigenitum, et ex patrin antum ante omnia secula, Deum de Deo, lumen de lumine, Deum verum de Deo vero, genitum non factum consustantialem patri, equem omnia factus sunt, Qui propter nos homines et propter nostrum salutem, descendi de cedis, et incarnatus est de Spiritus Sancto, ex Maria Virgine, et homo factus est. Crucifixus et sia pro nobis supponso velatu passus et subutus est, et resarexit essie die secundus peturas, et descendi in celum sede de dextram patri, et iterum venturus est con gloria iudicare vivus et votuus, cuius reni non erifius. Et in Spiritum Sanctum, Dominum et Vivificantem, qui ex Patre procedi, qui cum Patre et Filius semul adoratur cum glorificatur, qui locutus est per profetas, et unam sanctam catholicam et apostolicam ecclesiam, confiteo un batisma in remissionem popetorum, et ex specto resurrectionem mortuorum, et vitam venturi seculi. Amen. Dominus obobiscum, et cum spirito tuo. Ornemus. Assunta est Maria in cedum, Gaudent Angeli, Caraudantes, Benedicunt Dominum. Alleluia.
secula seculorum. Amen. Un dominus vobiscum et cum spiritu tu. Susum corda. Habemus ad dominum. Gracias ad amus domino Deo nostro. Dignum et justum est. Vere dignum et justum est dequam et salutare nos dipi sempre et ubique gracias agere domine sancte pater onipotens et tene deus. Et de in assumpcione beate Maria sempre diginis caludare, benedicere et predicare, quae ad unigenitum tuum sancti spiritus ob operazione concepit, et virginitatis gloria permanente, numere eterno mundo e fudit, Iesum Christum Dominum nostrum. Per quem me statem tuum laudat angeli, adorante dominazione, estremunt potestates, celi cerunque vetutes e beate serfim, soci sotazione concelebrant. Con cui vos a nostre voce su termiti u beste precamur, supplici confessione di cene. Sanctus, 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 Dominus Deus Sabeot, Lenis un cene a terra gloria tua, Hosanna in excelsis, Benedictus qui venit in nomine Domini, Hosanna in excelsis.
secula seculorum. Amen. Arremus precepti salutari cos maliti de vene soluzione formati. Ademus dicere, Pater noster tu es in cieli, sanctificetum nomen tuum, ad veni ad regnum tuum, fiet voluntas tua, sicut in cielo et in terra. Pane nostrum quadrianum de nobis fati, et dimite nobis debita nostra, sicut de nos dimitimus debitoricus nostris, et ne nos inducas in tentazione. Se libra nos amare. Ecce onius Dei, ecce quid tolet peccato mundi. Domine non sum dignus, ut in tre sur tectum mea, sed tantum de verbo, et senabitur anima mea. Domine non sum dignus, ut in tre sur tectum mea, sed tantum de verbo, et senabitur anima mea. Domine non sum dignus, ut in tre sur tectum mea, Sed tantum de verbo, et senabitur anima mea. Brothers and sisters watching Mass online are unable therefore to receive the Blessed Sacrament. We invite you now to make an act of spiritual communion, the words for which we'll find below your viewing screen. My Jesus, I believe that Thou art present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love Thee above all things, and I desire Thee in my soul. Since I cannot now receive thee sacramentally, 
come at least spiritually into my heart. As though thou wert already there, I embrace thee, and unite myself wholly to thee. Permit not that I should ever be separated from thee. Amen.
so viskum et kum spiritu tu ornemus. Mense celestis participes effecti, imploramus clemencia tuam, Domine Deus nostre, ut cui assumpcionem de genitricis calmus, a cuntis malis imminenensibus eius intercessione de bedremur. Per iundum Dominum nostrum, Iaesum Christum Filium tu, qui tecum divita regna ad unitatis Filipus Santi Deus, per omnia secula seculorum. Amen. Dominus obiscum, et cum spiritu tuo, ite misa est, Deo gratias. Sit nomen Domini benedictum, ex omnum catusque in secula, auditorium nostrum in nomine Domini, qui fece celem et terra, benedicat vos omnipotens Deus. Pater, et Filius, et Spiritus Sanctus. Amen. Dominus Oviscum, et cum Spiritu Tuo, initium Sancti Evangelii, secundum Ioanne, Gloria Tibi Domini. In principio aret vedum, et vedum aret apo Deum, et Deus aret vedum. Hoc erat in principio apo Deum, omnia per ipsum factum sum, et sim so factum sinil, quo factum est. In ipso vita erat, e vita erat lux hominum, e lux in tenebres luce, e tenebre an non comprehendem. Quoi tomo mi susede quel nomen erat Giovanni, e si credit in testimoni, vo testimoni bebere tu lumen, e lo con despetro in vilu. Non erit ille lux, e lo testimoni bebere tu lumen, e era lux vera, qua luminat omnem hominem venientem in ucunum. E mundo erat, e munus ripsum factus est, e munus in meum non coniogi. Propri venitit sum non ucciperum, quar quad altem ucciperum teum dei disbolestat in filios dei fieri, disqui prendi nomine eius, qui non e sanguinibus, ne contentati carnis, ne contentati viri, se le titrerati sum. Et verbum, carro factum eist, ut habitavit in nobis, et vinimus gloria meius, gloria in quasi nugeriti a patne, per un grazie veritatis. Deo grazie. salve a te clamamus ex ules finii heve a te suspiramus gementes ad flentes in hac lacrimarum vale ea ergo advocata nostra in los tuos Misericordes oculos ad nos converte. Et Iesu, benedictum fructum ventris tui, nobis post hoc exilium ostentem. O Clemens, O the Holy Mother of God, that, that we, we may, may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. O God, our refuge and our strength, look down with favour upon thy people who cry to thee, and through the intercession of the glorious and blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, of her spouse, Blessed Joseph, of thy holy apostles, Peter and Paul, and of all thy saints, mercifully and graciously hear the prayers which we pour forth to thee for the conversion of sinners and for the liberty and exaltation of our Holy Mother, the Church. We ask this with the same, Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. 